Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's still the online science tutor. I'm Caroline Ogenetega, a graduate of Petroleum Engineering and Technology from the Petroleum Training Institute uh, from Delta State, Nigeria, and a postgraduate diploma student of the Abuba Katapawa Balewa University, Bauchi State, Nigeria. Today we'll be talking about five reasons why people fail to use the jam why I can level. So if you ask most students, what's the one science subject that gives you so much work? What do you think will be the answer? Yes, you got you just guessed it right. Physics. Yes. They're gonna say physics. And the reason is because of the fact that there are certain things that most science students don't understand about physics. So today I'm going to be giving you five reasons, five things why you as a science student will still fail physics if you don't take note of them. So, without much shadow, let's go to call out the video. The first thing is that most science students come to physics and even come to the sciences with the mindset that physics is difficult. Don't forget, you are what you think. So as you think in your heart, so it will be for you as a reality. So most science students have this mindset of, oh, physics is so difficult. It's even the most difficult in the sciences. There's nothing I can do about it. If you have that mindset, that's the first reason why you're going to find out that you have issues understanding physics. The second thing is that most of them don't have a very good background in mathematics. So, when they solve for questions in physics, in places where they are now supposed to make a change of subject or formula to find out what they are solving for, most of them get to that point and they are unable to proceed from that point onwards. So, if you also are not so sound in your mathematics and you are a science student, please take out time. Go over the basic topics again. Don't look at it that, ah, I'm already in SS3, for example, I'm preparing for my work and all of that. No, still take our time to understand the basics of mathematics. For example, how to change subject or formula, how to round off, how to round off to significant numbers, how to raise to power, and how all of that playing, because you're going to be doing that a lot. What you will basically be doing in most questions at this level, that's SSE level, will be revolving around changing subject or formula. So sometimes you may be given temperature one, temperature two, pressure one, and you are told to solve for the pressure two. What you basically also do is going to be a change of subject or formula. So if you are not so good in mathematics, please, that's reason number two, you're not going to be very good in physics. All right, and then the third reason is not far-fetched from the second reason. The third reason why you're going to have issues with physics. Just guess. The opposite of mathematics in secondary school. English. Yes, that's it. Most of your questions in physics are word problems. So most students read a question. There is data scattered all over the questions. But they don't even understand what the question is saying to do. So if you don't know what you are asked to do, how do you decide to do it? You cannot do it. So please, if there are still some issues in English that you're having, for example, if you read a question and you are given a question that says um, 350 centimeter cube of a substance S is added to another substance, calculate. Your questions are going to come in word problem format. So please, still take up time, understand the basics of English, Understand how to interpret a question and bring out the data given so that you can know what you are solving for because most students don't even know what they are finding. They just know that there is an unknown and so if you give them a formula, they are really unable to impute each of the data that is in the question given. And for some of them, they just know that, okay, there will be one unknown. So if you give them an extra unknown that you expect that they are not going to work with it, you just give it to test their understanding and IQ of, do you really know what you are doing? 
you find that most times they don't know what they are doing. So, further, that's the reason number three. English problem, interpreting questions of word problem. And then, the fourth reason is also closely related to the first reason. And that is the fact that they don't know that your SI unit should guide you, can guide you, and should guide you. So, if I have a question, for example, and then my, the, like, um, for pressure time motions, and I'm given, calculate the time of flight. If my question is given in minutes or in hour, the basic fundamental SI unit of time for physics is seconds. So, you are expected to convert first. So, a failure to understand the place of your SI unit to guide you to know whether you can solve with the data you have been given up front or whether you need to make conversions first before solving is very, very critical. So, that's reason number four. The failure to check their SI unit to know whether they make any conversions before solving. And the fifth reason is as old as nature. And my favorite quote of something that can make you remember that is inconsistency lies the power. So, most science students want to give science a rush hour approach, a fast food approach. So, they just want, you've been in SS1, you never knew that you are supposed to be preparing for an external exam. You just read. When it's close to your exam, you just flip through the paper and you're like, oh, I pray they cover where I've read. If you have that mindset, it's not going to help you. So I'm going to advise, especially if you are in SS1, this is the best time to start preparing for your life. Such that every topic you have covered at your SS1 level, by the time you are getting to SS3, you should just require a little revision. Know that you are going to be learning it all over again. So don't forget, practice is still the key. Practice, practice, practice. You get better daily as you practice in your sciences. So if, if you if you are taught a topic, for example, try your answer on questions. Look at the possible way questions can be said. Look at the mindset. What are they saying? Understand your questions. But practice, you cannot run away from practice. So this is not a... This is not to say you cannot prepare for an exam if you already have a very short timeline, no. But this is to encourage those that have a very time frame, that have the mindset of when I get to SS3, I'm going to start practicing. You should get this, get this even at SS1 level, so that any topic you cover, you go back home and you practice the questions on that topic. Because this syllabus covers SS1 to 3 work. So if, for example, you are taught linear expansivity in SS1, you go through the various years and you check for questions in linear expansivity that are under that particular topic you just did, and you solve them and cross-check your answer. So I, I highly recommend this. If you don't have it, please do get it. The last time I got this was um, 650 Naira, but I don't know the current price, so you could check books, bookshops and then get. So don't forget, practice, practice, practice. A good, other auxiliary factors include just know how to impute data into your calculator so that you don't get it wrong at that point. But if you are able to take note of these five major reasons why people fail physics in, in jam and why, I'm very sure you're going to do so well. So reason number one as a way of recap for summarizing. We have the issue that of mindset that physics is difficult. Reason number two, they are not so good in mathematics, so they can't do change your subject or formula, so find what they are looking for. Reason number three, they have challenges with English language, so they can't understand what the question is saying or what they are asked to do. Reason number four, they don't work closely with their SI unit. They use the data they are given like that without even checking whether they will need to do any change in the SI unit, whether they would do any conversion of say gram to kilogram, and time in hours to seconds, and all of that. And then finally, they don't practice. They want a crash method. Crash is not always the way forward. Have you gotten value today in today's video? If you did, please give
give this video a thumbs up, like this video, subscribe to this channel, and uh, recommend to your friends. Yes, recommend to your friends. And this is to your continued success in jam and why to have a wonderful day. Thank you.